All right, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. I am talking about an over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse and in shittification of everything on this spectacularly gorgeous. It is a Tuesday morning, September 3rd, 2024, as the early fall uh, rolls in at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, <clears throat> but as I promised yesterday with my... Uh, rant about the uh, solutions that ain't going to happen from uh, Eric Michaels. At the end of that excellent essay, uh, <clears throat> Eric referred us over to another excellent top-of-the-line essay from this outfit I've mentioned before out of Canada called the Tai E. And this is an article written by writer and Thai E contributing editor, the journalist Andrew Nikiforik, I guess. It was written about six weeks ago, uh, titled The Enshittification of Everything. I, I had... <coughs> I had some crazy idea that my buddy Vegematic had come up with the, uh, had coined the term in shittification. But actually, uh, Andrew says the credit goes to uh, journalist Corey Doctorow. The in shittification of everything. Corey Doctorow invented the perfect word <clears throat> for our time of collapsing complexity. So uh, I, I'm going to read the beginning and the end of this and unfortunately skip over the middle. But uh, Andrew starts with a quote <clears throat> from some fellow I've never heard of, Antonio Gramsci. Quote, the challenge of modernity is to live without illusions and without becoming disillusioned. Thank you, Antonio. Okay, let's uh, dive into Andrew's excellent essay, The Enshittification of Everything. Last year, the American Dialect Society chose its word of the year. In shittification, Corey Doctorow, a clever fellow and Toronto-born internet dude, invented the term to characterize the declining service and products made by IT monopolies that generate armies of algorithms to bully people like stormtroopers. <clears throat> But I think the description has far broader applications. Everywhere you turn, it seems, civilization is facing a massive and cumulative failure of excessive, excessive complexity. And shittification explains the state of just about everything. Dr. Rowe laid out his concept in a brilliant Marshall McLuhan lecture delivered at the Canadian Embassy in Berlin earlier this year. And shittification proceeds through stages, wrote Dr. O. A platform such as Facebook or Google begins by offering a tidy product to all. Then it starts to abuse users to make more money for its business customers. The service declines, ads proliferate like viruses, privacy goes to hell, and before you know it, the platform charges you a hefty fee for choosing to leave its appalling embrace. Hence the word, and shittification. Dr. Rowe writes with flair, quote, The capitalism of today 
has produced a global digital ghost mall filled with bot shit, I love that, bot shit, crap gadgets from companies with consonant heavy brand names and cryptocurrency scams, close quote. To me, and shitification stands as a brutal reminder that wealth and power <coughs> are not permanent, and when they start to fail as they must, a sort of predatory decay prevails at all levels in society. At that point, and shitification becomes the norm. It is what unmakes your day. And then uh, Andrew, uh, he uh, gives a, a couple of examples from his own daily life that, that we all deal with. And while they are absolutely spot on and hilarious, just for time's sake, I, I have to... Uh, I have to skip forward before my enshittified, cheap-ass battery on this uh, camera collapses, but I encourage you to read it where, uh, where Andrew talks about supply chain failures at supermarkets and appliances. It just looks at how shitty appliances that used to to last 30 to 50 years are now lucky to make it five years as planned obsolescence. Uh, the, the brilliant marketing strategy of planned obsolescence uh, becomes the norm. <clears throat> so I'm going to skip over uh, all of that middle stuff that you need to go on the link and read and pick up with planned obsolescence and look at the bigger picture of the enshittification of everything which is tied into the complexity of global industrial civilization. <clears throat> we'll pick it up here. As a result of this planned obsolescence, appliances crowd our landfill cemeteries. Appliances make up half of the world's electronic waste, which is growing by leaps and bounds. What has happened to appliances is a pretty good metaphor for how complexity undermines society. The Utah anthropologist Joseph Tainter has argued that civilizations tend to collapse when they can no longer afford the social and energy cost of maintaining their complexity or, for that matter, their appliances. In other words, societies die when they cannot fix things in an affordable way explains Tainter, quote, after a certain point, increased investments in complexity fail to yield proportionately increasing returns. Marginal returns decline and marginal costs rise. Complexity as a strategy becomes increasingly costly and yields decreasing marginal benefits, close quote. Back to Andrew, ergo, and shitification. Another hallmark of complexity is growing concentration in top-heavy institutions. Dr. Rose says in his talk that enshittification is the direct product of concentration, lack of competition, and the absence of regulation. Monopolies rule the IT world just as they rule almost every aspect of life these days. 
Three transnational companies, Bayer, DuPont, and Syngenta, now control about 53% of global seed sales. Four companies control 45% of farm machinery sales. Four companies account for 58% of pharmaceutical sales. Five retailers control what is on Canadian grocery shelves and how it is produced. Two companies slaughter 95% of Canada's beef and so on. Such concentration, all accelerated by technology, is a form of decay. Lots of rotting platforms everywhere. And shittification. What was once promised to be a miracle breakthrough that will liberate humanity cannot escape the entropy of enshittification. You may think I am describing the internet again, but no, this applies equally to fossil fuels. <clears throat> 100 years ago, it went like this. <clears throat> Roughnecks drilled a hole, found a rich pool of oil, and then pumped away. But those big milkshakes have been drained. As a result, the quality and quantity of energy is getting worse and more expensive. The, the technology today used to pry bits of oil and gas from underground formation is called fracking and it is one destructive innovation and just in case you guys uh, are not aware of this of course Kamala Harris is every bit as big a cheerleader now of fracking the flip-flopper Kamala Harris is every bit as now a big a cheerleader of fracking as Donald Trump is a cheerleader of fracking as Barack Obama was. So while he is the, uh, explaining this, understand uh, that there is no way uh, you're going to find a, a, anyone heading to the White House uh, who does not support fracking. <clears throat> fracking requires assembling hundreds of trucks, plundering lakes of water, mining mountains of sand, which you can see three miles from where I am sitting, the mining mountains of sand, and mixing tons of chemicals to blast rock two kilometers underground at such high pressure that the industry causes earthquakes from Argentina to northern British Columbia. Then the industry has to bury Olympic-sized pools of toxic and radioactive wastewater causing more earthquakes and changing bacterial communities to boot. Think about it. The industry that keeps planes, the, you know, the industry that every politician on this planet in the pocket of the fossil fuel corporations supports and cheers on that industry that keeps planes airborne and cars on the road now depends on a platform that makes earthquakes, poisons groundwater, leaks methane, fragments agricultural land, and defies regulation as arrogantly as Meta or Google. Most of us users, meaning everyone who uses fossil fuels, meanwhile cannot understand why the cost of flying, driving, and heating our homes are rising. Here is a hint. According to a, one recent study, the amount of energy needed to frack and mine petroleum products now cannibalizes about 15% of what is produced. Thanks to the intensification of liquid natural gas, 
fracking and bitumen streaming, half of petroleum production will be consumed by energy-intensive mining processes by 2050. That means less energy for homes, schools, and the whole AI madness. As a consequence, the world faces a three-way conundrum, an energy transition that seems more improbable every passing year, increasing environmental threats and risk of unprecedented energy shortages and associated economic depression in less than two decades, and shittification, in other words, of pretty much everything. And now that I, my enshittified, cheap-ass uh, uh, battery on this camera is enshittifying, so I'm just going to read this until my shitty battery collapses. The alarming thing about Dr. Rose's chronology is that it pretty well matches the rise and fall of platforms known as civilizations. The average lifespan of a civilization is 250 years or five times longer than a washing machine built in 1970. Every civilization goes through stages of cooperation, overreach, stagnation, decay, and collapse. Things start out good for users, freedom and purpose, and then decline into tyranny and wars, and then the cycle repeats. At some point in each round, as societies increasingly complexify, elites get greedy and start quarreling and abuse consumers. All the energetic bustle and acquired abundance leads, as William Op Ophels writes in Immoderate Greatness, to faded ideals, diminished energy, feeding elites, genocidal politics, and problems that cannot be solved. Nobody can fix a dishwasher anymore, and its maker, who lives in a gated community in Mexico, does not give a shit. So, once in shitified, where to next? Clay Shirky, an internet maven like Dr. O, finds wisdom in the works of anthropologist Tainter, who outlined the perils of accelerating complexity. Quote, when ecosystems change and change and inflexible institutions collapse, their members disperse, abandoning old beliefs, trying new things, making their living in different ways than they used to, wrote Shirky in an essay on failing TV business models. Quote, it is easy to see the ways in which collapse towards simplicity wrecks the glories of old, but there is one compensating advantage for the people who escape the old system. When the ecosystem stops rewarding collect complexity, it is the people who figure out how to work simply in the present rather than the people who mastered the complexities of the past who get to say what happens in the future, close quote. As a journalist nowadays, I am often at a loss for words. My work cannot stop what's coming and who is listening anyway. In shitification, it is far too apt and useful a word to confine to wondering about why the internet has failed to deliver on all the hype. Thank you, Corey Dr. O. We now have the perfect description for how it feels to live in the twilight of an inattentive civilization that has sacrificed sanity for complexity.
and unbelievably uh, my uh, shitty camera battery uh, has made it 20 minutes uh, but anyway guys that was a little bit over half of this uh, essay I will put the link on here and encourage you to uh, read the enshittification of everything if you want to understand the collapse of global industrial civilization. But I, I have to wrap this up and uh, get Seahorse Tiny House ready for the newest vacation guest getting out there and enjoying bugs in a jar farm while they still can on this spectacularly gorgeous day on the planet. Bye guys.